Hi, hello, this is Fernando Gomez Sancha. My talk today is to describe published techniques to perform anatomical enucleation of the prostate, similarities and differences. I have been a consultant for Luminis and Quanta System, and I am a consultant for these companies. So if you look at the task they have given me today, there are many different energy sources with different uh, wavelength, lasers, bipolar, monopolar. There are different approaches, three lobes, two lobes, one lobe within an incision and block early or late apical liberation, and atomic techniques versus non-atomic techniques, mechanical energy versus dissection with energy, sorry, mechanical dissection versus uh, energy dissection. And then the personal touch that every surgeon uh, gives to their operation. So I would like to bring the figure of uh, Spock, who uh, had this eidic idea of infinite diversity and infinite combinations as the basis of the Vulcan philosophy in Star Trek. Uh, there are infinite diversity of, of techniques and combinations and the number of publications discussing surgical technique are overwhelming. And I have to say, uh, there have been many, many contributions from many, many surgeons who are passionate about what they do and who are trying to communicate their ideas uh, so that the rest of the world can know about this and uh, act upon, an, upon them, uh, implement them in their practices. This is a very nice paper where Peter Gilling and colleagues uh, describe the history of uh, prostate enucleation and um, you can see that there's different sources of energy and different uh, ideas um, published over the uh, late uh, years. And I have to say, I apologize if someone, I'm not including someone's uh, work in, in this presentation. I am focusing it to highlight some ideas that I think are important. And uh, I, I apologize if I don't include the work of some, some people, of course. We have to acknowledge Hiraoka in 1983. He was the first human being to perform an endoscopic enucleation. He developed a special probe to do that. And he would do an in block enucleation with the assistance of the finger in the rectum, which was common in open prostatectomy at that time. He published very little information about the clinical results of his technique, and he was largely ignored until uh, Peter Gilling and Fraundorfer described the classic three-loop te uh, technique for HOLEP. This has been the, the, the main uh, way of performing HOLEP over the last years, and uh, many people who have used uh, other lasers, other sources of, of energy have used a similar approach. Uh, it is the technique that has most uh, biggest amount of materials to, to learn and to teach. Some of the teaching resources are based on this technique and, and it has been the most uh, widely adopted. But this uh, technique was a little bit difficult to learn. It had a relatively long learning curve. And of course, there was a high risk of temporary stress incontinence. Some centers would uh, show 39%, 16%, 10% 10% at the beginning of, uh, and then it went down to 20% or 15%. But that's a lot of patients with incontinence for some months until it uh, got better. My interpretation of this is that the dissection of the apex was carried out mechanically with the scope, without looking at the sphincter, with, without uh, realizing what was happening. And of course, this curtain was developed by the action of the endoscope going up and dissecting the lateral plane. And then, of course, the curtain had to be cut. But of course, this curtain comes from the sphincter itself. So it is a deepithelization of the sphincter. And in my, in my opinion, the, when you do that to the sphincter, it cannot uh, do the, the watertight seal uh, function until the mucosa grows back after some weeks or months and regains its uh, functionality. So the first technique that uh, was uh, published in 2008 by Endo was this anterior-posterior dissection uh, Holep. It, uh, this technique started at 12 o'clock, let's say, to dissect downwards. So it was very different from the original uh, dissection. And as you can see, 
there was an amazing uh, improvement in the rate of uh, stress incontinence after the operation. It was a relatively small series comparing their results with the classic technique, but uh, again, it was largely ignored. Uh, uh, not, not, it didn't have a lot of impact, and people got, uh, I mean, still were obsessed with the three lobe technique. Uh, then Thomas Herman described Thulep in 2009. Up to that time, the thulium vapor enucleation was trying to take out three lobes, but many times not following the right plane and not always anatomically. Uh, but uh, Thulep used a mechanical dissection with the scope and uh, it used the laser to cut fibrous tracts and to coagulate. And uh, they described, let's say, the basis of a three lobe enucleation technique carried out with thulium. They published uh, a meta analysis of randomized control trials comparing it to homium, and they had a little bit less incontinence rate, but still significant. And here you can see again the mucosal uh, curtain that we are, are discussing. Then uh, Dr. Gong published his uh, posterior start technique. So instead of um, starting at the bladder neck, pre preparing incisions, he would start dissecting at the apex, and then he would carry the posterior dissection all the way to the bladder neck. I think this was quite interesting, and um, but I thought it was a little bit crazy because in the large glands, that might be a little bit difficult. And then he would do a two-lobe enucleation, uh, uh, trying to follow, again, a similar method of dissection anterior so posterior anterior uh, dissection of the of the apex, so interesting uh, contribution. Then uh, Miernik presented the three horse shoe like incision in 2018, and here he was also starting with uh, with a, this dissection uh, around the Veramontanum to find the plane, and he would carry up the dissection laterally again blindly. So here you can see the infamous mucosal curtain again. And then he would do another horseshoe incision in the bladder neck to, to finalize the procedure and, and uh, uh, dissect uh, the prostate uh, this, this way. So an unblock technique with uh, three incisions, but still the dissection of the apex was following the classic approach. And uh, also the, the, the incontinent results were similar. We, we described uh, in 2014 this uh, green light uh, enucleation technique. It was uh, very similar to Hiraoka's uh, original description, but uh, we um, reflected about this white line. If you cut the mucosa at the apex before you start the operation, you're going to prevent it from breaking in, in another area when you do your dissection of the apex. And uh, we observed very low uh, stress incontinence rate, despite carrying out a mechanical uh, enucleation of the prostate. And this has been corroborated by many groups who have published their uh, series of uh, green light enucleation. The rate of, of incontinence is very low. And um, that's uh, quite interesting. Of course, uh, Scofone presented the block no touch technique in 2015. It was an in block technique, but it started with an incision, a classic incision, and then it would uh, try to remove the, the prostate in block. But again, you see the, the, the infamous mucosal curtain in, in one of these graphs. So again, uh, as you can see, people have been trying to contribute with different ideas. And we have been evolving uh, slowly, trying to improve what we do. The in-block technique with one uh, lobe was uh, probably faster. It was had some advantages. And uh, the, the, the no-touch technique was a new concept that you should avoid touching the technique with the, with the, the, the laser. And uh, here uh, in 2019, Scofone uh, reflected even further about uh, how to perform the apical dissection to preserve the mucosa in the sphincter, because uh, we are now recognizing how important this is if you want to get immediate continence for the majority of your patients. One year before that, we published this in block 
uh, technique of Holmium with uh, early apical release, which was a continuation for us of what we were doing with the green light enucleation. Of course, we had to adapt and develop some ideas and tips and tricks to use a straight firing fiber to do the unblock technique. Uh, and we found out that it was a very fast uh, technique with very low rate of uh, stress incontinence, and it keeps uh, getting better. This is a series of 80 patients that we followed up prospectively uh, with Moses uh, Homium, and uh, we found out that the rate of stress incontinence was uh, very, very low after one month. Uh, Thomas Herman published the TULIP updated technique in 2019. And uh, of course, this uh, shows a new development of or an evolution and different uh, reflections on, on how to uh, uh, TULIP uh, uses a blunt anatomical dissection and uh, it uh, uh, denies the importance of the energy source. It's more an anatomical uh, concept. Then uh, this uh, technique uh, by Ito, uh, the complete in block uh, with direct bladder neck incision uh, technique. What they do is they find the plane at the apex and then they progress very fast to the bladder neck. And then they continue the dissection uh, uh, clockwise until they cut the last uh, attachment uh, laterally. And uh, they have also uh, reported relatively uh, lower rates of uh, stress incontinence rate, but this is just showing how vibrant this, this uh, uh, field is in neurology, that uh, there's new ideas coming up all the time. And again, this uh, publication by Lin uh, also compares different and block, uh, and block uh, ideas, and they, they look at the incontinence rate and they uh, find that uh, three incisions uh, with uh, some modification from the other uh, technique that we discussed before, where they score the mucosa at the beginning, will give very low uh, incontinence rate. So they recognize that this technique is very similar to what we described with the uh, white line and the early apical liberation. And finally, there's a new concept that uh, Thomas uh, Herman is pushing the preservation of the 12 o'clock mucosa. Uh, there is uh, some uh, anatomical background to this with uh, techniques that have been described for a robotic adenomectomy where the urethra is preserved. So inspired by this, uh, Thomas Herman has described this idea, uh, but we still don't know if it has any advantage in terms of continence or bladder neck stricture rates but uh, of course, we are exploring new ideas all the time. So to me, the idea that uh, is showing in different papers, different groups, and their data is that if you do a careful apical dissection and you try to preserve the sphincters mucosa, you will get low rate of uh, early stress incontinence. So as you have seen, there's many contributions trying to improve the outcomes of endoscopic enucleation. There is a recent surgical technique refinements that make endoscopic enucleation of the prostate a very attractive option for the treatment of BPH. And I think now it's the time to learn and do it. I have personally uploaded more than 30 uh, real-time videos, real life cases, which means that they're not so cherry picked, you know, that when you see them, you find them, they're perfect, but they, they reflect the reality of, of, of the technique we described on the early apical liberation. So if you're interested, I would be very happy if you visit and uh, comment on this on these ideas. So thank you very much for your attention, and I will be happy to answer questions uh, when the time comes. Thank you.